third speaker, uh, Senator Keiso Takemi. Uh, he's a senator of the House of Hansen, the Nas uh, National Diet of Japan. Wonderful. He will talk about national policy, orientation, and architecture. I appreciate very much indeed that having this wonderful occasion to talk about uh, the, the longevity issues. This is uh, not only a, a domestic individual issues. Now it's become a common agenda beyond the national boundary in Asia as a whole. The Victor just quite clearly uh, visualized that uh, the global aging. But now I would like to highlight on those of the specified area in Asia. I and uh, Mr. Izumi is an assistant to the Prime Minister, they jointly take a very important initiative to start the Asian health and human well-being. We call it AWIN. This shows that uh, uh, the global aging, the green shows that uh, part of uh, the, the, the population over 65, and then now in 2015, it's just over the half, but by 2050, nearly 70% of the global population become over 65. And this is the population by age group, Asia and the Pacific region as a total. The Asia is defined as East, East Asia and the Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, and Central Asia, South Asia, and including Oceania. And then, you can look at this. In 1995, already the population under 14 hit the peak in Asia as a whole and consistently become decreasing. And on the other hand, the, those, the population over 65, uh, in 2010, there were 300 million people aged 65 years and over. The elderly population will keep on increasing by 100 million every five years. It will reach 900 million in 2050, almost triple the number today. And the youngest, and, and then the working population, 15 to 64, will peak in 2045, and then will decrease. This demographic the change quite clearly shows that, that we have to prepare now. This is a, a demo, demographic the dependency, dependency ratio. In Japan, the independency ratio uh, decreased sharply after 1950 and reached the bottom from 1960 to 2000 when there was strong economic growth. This can be seen as the demographic dividend of Japan. During this period, Japan was able to develop system to deal with aging. In 1961, universal health insurance was achieved and the long-term care insurance was introduced in 2000. So we are very lucky. We had the 40 years to prepare for speedy aging. On the other hand, most Asia and the Pacific countries were having a high dependency ratio around the 1970s due to a growing number of babies and children. Then the dependency ratio started to decline sharply and now many are hitting the bottom. But after the dependency ratio, they hit the bottom, then the population aging push up the ratio rapidly. The length of the benefits of the demographic dividend is very, very short. So the graph can be described as the V-shaped arc. This argument of U-shaped arc of Japan or the V-shaped arc in other Asian countries is is the most important when designing measures for aging individually and collectively in this region. And this, the graph, 
shows uh, the speed of aging in Asia. It's a, the, the United Nations defined uh, the, the aging in a very clear manner. Uh, the, if the 7% of the elderly population share, uh, uh, shared by the 7% uh, seven, uh, seven of the total population become over 65, we called it the aging society. And it's become the double, 14%. We defined it as a aged society. And triple, 21% of the total population become over 65. We defined as the super aged society. So now that the Japan, we can say that the super, super aged society. But I look at the, the aging started in the European continent around 1940, but took 40 or 70 years to be an aged society. But in Japan, started in 1970, we entered into the aging society, but took only 24 years to be an aged society. So we did realize that, wow, that the speed of aging is so fast in Japan in comparison with the other, the Western developed nation. But look at the other Asian countries newly developed. Most of those uh, entered into the aging society uh, by uh, 2000. And then they took only uh, 18 years to be an aged society, uh, such as the South Korea. The Singapore, 20 years, uh, Thailand, 20 years. China has a, such a gigantic population, only take uh, 23 years to be an aged society. And Sri Lanka, uh, 20 years. And then the, the next wave is coming around 2020 in Asia. Uh, we can say that uh, uh, Vietnam is uh, the, uh, the, the, the front runner for the next wave of the aging in Asia. But uh, in case of the Vietnam, only take uh, 18 years to be an aged society. And after the Vietnam, the India and the Indonesia are coming into the aging society. But uh, this means that uh, we can define several different type of the tsunami of the aging in Asia as a whole. How we can utilize this gap among the different waves in order to create the win-win game to overcome those the common agenda, such as the aging issues. And now I want to pick up the several impact of the aging. This, this is a very familiar for you, uh, the, the person who works for the medical community, growing danger of the non-communicable diseases. Uh, the, the cancers and the ischemic diseases and strokes and those uh, the non-communicable diseases become the most, the biggest, the cause of death. And then the cancer. It's, it's amazing uh, the figures we noticed. According to the WHO International Agency for Research on Cancer, the number of the incident is expected to continue to increase from 607, uh, 600 and uh, 763,000 in 2012 to uh, 10 million and 841,000 in 2030. The number of the new cancer in 2030 over 65 years old will increase by 100, 191%, nearly double, in comparison with 2015. It is a massive increase that compared with the 136% for under 65 years old. So it is obvious that those at the larger size of the elderly population, uh, 65, means that the more larger size of the new the page, uh, page, uh, cancer patients are coming. And then how we can cope with those larger size of the new cancer patients all over 
the Asia in the future. And then the Japan has just started to create those uh, the new the challenge for the cancer genomic the medicine in Japan. Just two years ago, we started to prepare for it, and just completed. And then now we have a action program. Maybe the hospital of the Keio Medical School is a part of the partners of this genomic medicines network, right? And then the second impact is the sustainability of the medical care. This is the large headache of us who works for the, the parliament and also works for the Ministry of Health and Welfare and Labor. You know, even though the ones achieve the wonderful universal health coverage, the most important thing is that how to sustain the system as a whole. Uh, this is the proportion of the population uh, 60 years or over the living independently alone or with spouse. The Germany, already in a 90 over 90 percent of the elderly population live alone or live with the old the spouse. And the USA is 76 percent, Japan 50, 51 percent, China 39 percent, Vietnam 29, Indonesia 25, Thailand 21, and India 17.3 percent. And those, the percentage of the Asian countries means that uh, it is absolutely increasing in the future. And then, how does Japan cope with those of the increasing isolated the elderly population? We build up so many long-term care facilities. And at the first stage of the aging in 1970 and 80s, we build up so many the, the special hospital for elderly population without any charge, especially after the beginning of 1970. And then we did realize that we are bankrupt. And then we tried to move those are the inpatient from the hospital to the long-term care facilities. Therefore, the size of the long-term care facilities in 90, oh, 1990 was only at 2,250. But 2011, it's triple, 6,254. And it's still increasing, especially in Tokyo uh, district. But what does it mean? The nearly the bank club for the long-term care insurance as well. The, the premium when we introduced the long-term care, it was uh, only uh, uh, 2,911 years for or the over 40 years people in Japan, but now it's over 5,000 5, and the many of the, the municipalities now should collect the premium over uh, 8,000. Those, the speed of increasing of the charge of the premium shows that the, this system also faces a nearly a bankrupt. Therefore, finally, we reached the agreement to highlight on the comprehensive, the community, integrated community care system. We now, once, try to move those of the patient in the hospital, nearly 20% of them, move from the hospital to home of theirs. And then, you know, we he called it the hospital at home. In, in a community health system, we try to combine the different type of the services for the healthcare service and long-term care services, the focusing on the same patient at home. In order to do that, we try to create the, those, the teams of the multilateral you know, uh, the task forces uh, which are, are consist of the, the medical doctors, the nurse, and the uh, rehabilitation workers, and several other uh, the, uh, home helpers. And then 
we try to mobilize those the people uh, in the community, uh, focus on those uh, the people who are really in need. It just started three years ago. But we did notice that the, when we efficiently create those the system for uh, integrated community care system, the simultaneously we have to build up the capacity of the community itself. So without those are the basis of, of, of the community function, it is very difficult to build up those the system as a part of the community health care. Uh, therefore, this is the big challenge, especially in Tokyo, in such a gigantic city. Those, uh, most of those the elderly people are, are quite isolated. And the third impact of the aging poor. Uh, this is uh, the, the percentage of the recipient of the public assistance, uh, Sekatsu Hogo. Uh, the, the, it is uh, the increasing, you know, uh, the, the now that the 45.5% of the recipient of the public assistance now become over 65 years old. And this speed is growing very, very sharply. And this shows that uh, we are now facing a very serious social new phenomenon as a name of the aging poor. How we can overcome these issues. And the fourth impact of the shortage of the care workers. You know, we expect that uh, we are having uh, 400,000 shortage of the health care workers in 2025. Even though we try to mobilize the uh, women at home and also the uh, healthy, uh, you know, aging uh, the people as a worker for the elderly care workers. Still, we should have the additionally the 400,000 care workers. How we can find out those the workers? It is obvious that we cannot find in Japan. We have to find the really qualified those people from Asia. Uh, that's the reason why Mr. Izumi and I take initiative for the Asian health and human well-being. You know, as I mentioned that in Vietnam, already aging started in a very speedy manner. However, no any long-term care services actually, especially financing measures. They, the government has no any financing measure for those long-term care services. Therefore, the young businessmen started to build up the long-term care facilities in the Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh cities. And those of the long-term care facilities in Vietnam now has a very long line of list, waiting list for the elderly population. The single room is over uh, 800 US dollar, but the now the those elderly population can pay for. However, when I ask the owner of this the long-term care facility in Vietnam, what is the most difficult issues now you have? He responded my questions. Oh, it's health workers. Only a uh, nurse can be available for uh, health care workers at the long-term care facilities in Vietnam. Uh, therefore, you know, I just proposed to the Vice Prime Minister of Vietnam to have uh, the, you know, the circulated uh, long-term care workers market in Asia as a whole. We have uh, four years institutionalized uh, the labor training program. But we decided to allow those of the qualified, those workers who complete the whole the process of five years, the, the work, uh, 
uh, work training program can have another additional chance to stay in Japan additional five years. Therefore, now we can invite those of the elderly care workers from Asia, specifically from Vietnam, and then they can join those the five years uh, the training program course, which means actually assist the elderly care works at the several long-term care facilities. And then, while they stay in Japan, they can take some the official exams to get the official status as the long-term care workers. And then, we can send them back to the Vietnam to work for their own elderly population. Or they can stay a bit longer to assist the Japanese the long-term care works in each of the facilities. So if we can create those uh, uh, circulation of long-term care workers, it can be a win-win game in Asia as a whole. The Ministry of Health has just started to negotiate with the government of Vietnam, a labor ministry. Not yet completed, but I'm quite sure that this, you know, the process can be completed in the near future and started to create those the new the ma labor market in Asia in which the caregivers uh, can be circulated beyond the national boundaries and then deliver the more qualified services for their own individual, the elderly population in each Asian countries. This is uh, the, our new initiative for Asian health and human well-being. And I hope that the, the Victor, you are a big challenge for those of the new uh, the research program and also to create those of the networks among those the potential partners, yours in Asia. I really hope that uh, those are social and economic aspect of the aging, which can be very important to overcome this common agenda beyond the national boundaries. Only an individual country in Asia cannot improve their own aging issues alone. So I hope that the United States of America also can join this new initiative in Asia as a lie to the Japan and then create those the new, the more dynamic, you know, the streams to overcome the common agenda, the aging issues. Thank you very much, your patience.